Hey guys, I'm Ivory and today I'm going to be doing a two-day wear test on the AOA Buildable Satin Foundation. I'll be showing you how this applies initially as well as checking in throughout the day to show you how it wears. For anyone that is new, I have oily and acne prone skin so my wear tests are catered towards people with similar skin types so if you find that this review is helpful, I will link up in the cards a playlist of all the other foundations I've done a review on. So this foundation can be found on Shop Missy. If you don't know what that website is, all of the makeup on that website is very affordable. It's usually around one dollar and a lot of the times when something is over a dollar it is because the proceeds toward that product goes towards a charity in this case this foundation is 188 and on the back it says a portion of proceeds goes towards kids education so even though it's already affordable if they do increase the price usually it's because it's for a good cause also everything on that website is cruelty free which is perfect because I myself am cruelty free I always want to remind people that because I still get requests all the time for brands that are not cruelty free if you see me use a product that is not cruelty free it is because I'm just using it up and in the past I have not always been cruelty free I always cared more about affordability such as say Maybelline Revlon L'Oreal they're all affordable but they are not cruelty free so I can understand why that may be confusing but I myself do not purchase from brands that are not cruelty free anymore so if you have any recommendations that is my one requirement please and thank you so I've already done my skincare and I am gonna go in with primer on only half my face to see if primer even makes a difference with this foundation I'm going in with the rare beauty pore diffusing primer I've been testing this one out for at least a week or two every single time I do my makeup off camera I've been using this one and I really like it so far. I put in one pump and I'm gonna put it on this side because in my last wear test I put primer on this side so I like to alternate for every single wear test and I apply this to the center of my face at first and then with the remaining product I will spread it outwards. And then half my face I'm gonna be using a brush and then the other half of my face I will be using a sponge to see how the foundation applies with two very common applicators. The brush that I'm using is the Sigma F47 which is the multitasker and the sponge that I'm using is the Juno & Co microfiber sponge. I will link both of these products in my description box. The foundation is a lightweight liquid formula that delivers buildable coverage and a long lasting natural finish. The shade that I'm using is 307 Natural Beige. It retails for 188 and contains 0.64 ounces. Okay, so this is one layer of foundation. I can still see my acne peeking through, so I would say that this is a low medium coverage, but I definitely think that the sponge gave me better coverage. I do think that this side actually had more acne and the fact that it looks more covered right now than even this side clearly tells me that the sponge will give me more coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and add a second layer of foundation to see how this builds up. All right, so this is two-ish layers of foundation. I really only added an extra layer right here on my cheeks and my chin because that is where my acne is. I never add more than one layer on my, on my foundation, on my forehead. All right, because I really don't get acne here except for this one right here, but we're gonna ignore that. But with the exception of this one, my forehead is quite clear. I don't have acne or acne scarring. Rico! I got 307 Natural Beige and it is a little yellow on me, but it's workable and I think when I apply everything else, it'll look more normal. But you can see with this foundation alone, it does give a pretty nice satin finish. I would say now that the coverage is medium. It does have a slight scent to it. It kind of smells like Tide, you know, like clean laundry, which actually isn't a bad smell to me. And I have worn this before, so I do know that the smell does dissipate, but some people are very against fragrances, so I just wanted to take note of that. You can see on my acne because the skin on top of it is always dry. Dryer. It's clinging on to my acne a little bit weird. It looks a little flaky. This is where it looks the worst, but everywhere else, I would say it looks it looks all right. I'm going to fast forward doing the rest of my makeup. All of the products I use will be listed in my description box below. Okay, so now that my makeup is all on, this area that was dry, it doesn't look so dry anymore. I see just a tiny, tiny bit of dryness clinging to the foundation, but it's way better. And I think when my oils come in, it will continue to get better. But you can see right now, everywhere else looks pretty good. But that is it for now. I'm gonna be wearing this for 10 hours today. I will check in around the halfway point to show you how it's wearing. All right, so we are at the five and a half hour mark. I did go to Costco today, so I had to wear my mask only for an hour. So there is a little bit of disturbance here. Tomorrow, I won't be wearing a mask, so I'll be able to see how it looks with no 
complications, but you know, an hour of wearing a mask is nothing, especially now that I work at the salon. I mean, the entire day that I'm there with the exception of when I go to the back to drink some water and get some food, that is the only time I'm not wearing a mask. So compared to that, an hour is nothing. But a little bit did rub off on my chin. It looked worse initially, but as my oils came in, it kind of helped blend and disguise the parts that were missing. So it really doesn't look so bad. And surprisingly on my nose, it barely rubbed off. I mean, I see it a little bit rubbed off, but compared to other foundations, this is actually pretty good. And you can see on both, oh my God, this is it. It's getting bigger as the day goes on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you can see that oil wise on either side, it looks pretty good and everything is staying together for the most part all right. In terms of primer versus no primer, so I do see a small difference. It's a stretch, but to me, I do see a little bit of a difference, but you would have to be obnoxiously close to me to see what I'm seeing. The primer side, it just looks a tad smoother. It doesn't look any less shiny. The foundation is just laying a hair better. It's a little bit smoother really on either side, but I feel like it's breaking up a little, a little less in my problematic areas on the primer side. I can see a little bit on the T-zone. It's just, it's settled a little bit less on this half. And I can see a little bit here on my under eye and on my cheeks. It just looks just a little bit smoother. So I do feel like primer is helping it wear better, but it's not necessarily making me stay any less shiny. Cause I feel like oil wise, it looks about the same, right? I don't know why after like three years of doing this, I still ask you questions as if I'm gonna get an answer right away. It's just a habit. Hi honey. Say hello to everybody. I'm dog sitting for my best friend, so. This is her dog. So he's not a foster, he is my nephew. In case you guys wanted to see my dogs too, they're right here. This one is Willow, and then this one is Millie. Hi baby girl, Oh, I am gonna go ahead and blot. I like to blot earlier rather than later because I've come to realize that when my face is too greasy, it's already broken up the foundation so much that it's past the point of salvaging. So by doing it a little bit early, you're more likely to prolong the longevity of the foundation and making it look better longer. The blotting sheets that I'm using are discontinued, but I will link an alternative that I actually prefer in my description box. All right, so I did go ahead and blot. I do see that a little bit of the product came off on the blotting sheets. You can see it on my nose, my skin peeking through, and just a little bit on my chin as well. It's looking a little bit dry now that I've taken away some of my oils, but that's totally normal. After an hour or two when my oils come back in, it helps blend the foundation a little bit better. So I'm not really too worried about that right now. But I gotta say, overall, I'm impressed by the way that this is wearing. It's barely settled into my fine lines. I see it settling a little bit right there, and just just a little bit right here, but that's something that you could just really easily buff out. And for a foundation being less than $2, it's not just a good foundation for under $2. I'd say like overall for just a foundation in general, this is wearing pretty well. I will check back at the 10 hour mark to give you my final thoughts on day one. Okay, we have reached 10 hours and I am low key impressed because I had very low expectations just because it is so cheap and because I did a full face of their stuff and I was, you know, some of it was good, some of it was not, and a lot of it fell in the middle. So I had this idea of how I thought this day was gonna go, but I am pleasantly surprised. Oil-wise, I don't feel like I'm very oily. I feel like this looks really nice. There are a couple areas that are less than perfect. For example, my upper lip, I'm getting those missing holes of foundation where my hair would grow back, but I shaved right before I did my skincare. So this is freshly shaved today. So the fact that those holes are showing, I've had foundations that settled way more and it looked way worse, but I am seeing those missing holes happening on my upper lip. And even though my chin looks better now that my oils have come in, it still is cracking and looks a little bit dry from the last time that I blotted. So it makes me wonder if maybe I shouldn't blot tomorrow because I thought that this would look a little bit better by this point, but that's just a good thing to know. So maybe tomorrow I will avoid blotting. My nose from the five hour mark doesn't really look any different. And same thing with my teeth. I see a little bit of settling, but not anything more than what I saw at the five and a half hour mark. Everything looks more or less the same as it did from the last check-in because I had a little bit of settling in my forehead wrinkle and my smile line, and it's not like it settled even more five hours later. I would say overall looks pretty good, but the one thing that is bringing it down a little bit is right here. My upper lip and chin area is the part that doesn't look as good as the rest of my face, but this doesn't look that bad. It's just in comparison to the rest of the face. As far as primer versus no primer, that's a really tough call to make. I can see very few differences. I'm gonna go ahead and say that primer made little to no difference. Depending on what primer you use, it may help the foundation, but I don't think primer will in any way hurt 
the foundation if you decide to use it. So I think you're you're good either way. But to conclude day one, I definitely will be using a sponge to apply this foundation because I preferred using that applicator. I felt like I got more coverage. It did pretty well with the mask as long as you don't have to wear it too long. And as far as blotting, I'm not sure if blotting was the best thing to do with this foundation just because my chin now looks pretty dry. So I would either just be really careful and lightly blot or maybe go in with a pressed powder instead or just not blot. So that's just some good things to learn for tomorrow. I like to leave my final final thoughts to the end of this video so that nothing is super repetitive, but that is it for day one. Good night. Okay, it is day two and since primer made little to no difference yesterday, I don't think it matters too much if I put it on today. You know what, I'll just put it on because it definitely didn't hurt to wear it with the foundation. And I'm gonna apply it to both sides today. And then on half my face, I will be adding powder underneath my foundation. Adding powder underneath is a great oily skin hack to help prolong oils from coming through. It can also help the foundation stay together better. So if you have either of those problems, you might wanna try putting powder underneath first. My favorite one to use is the Dermablend Loose Setting Powder. So I'll go in with my puff. This one is from Tati Beauty and I apply it to all my problematic areas. So basically the center of my face. You could put this on your entire face. I've done that too when I was super oily, but I feel like nowadays it's a little bit more centralized. Damn it, I said I was only gonna apply it to half my face and I was yammering away, so I applied it to both sides of my face. My bad. So you're not gonna be able to see a side-by-side -side comparison on my face, but I will have to just include snippets of yesterday so that I can compare it since I didn't powder underneath yesterday. And then that's all my skin prep, so now I'm gonna go in with foundation and I'm gonna use my microfiber sponge since I preferred that coverage yesterday. And I'm telling you, a microfiber sponge is so different than any other sponge. I have switched so many people onto this type of sponge versus just a regular sponge. If you're the type of person that says, my sponge always shears out my foundation, try this one. It's different, I promise you, because I have sponges that are not microfiber and I can see the difference. Okay, so having powder underneath is not working well with this foundation. On my cheeks and my forehead, I can see that it looks totally fine because I didn't add powder there, but everywhere that I did add powder, the skin just looks really textured and dry. You can see right here by my eyebrow how dry it looks. And the same thing is happening on my chin. I can see how dry and flaky it looks. It'll probably look better once all the makeup is on, but I just wanted to show you what it looked like with foundation and nothing else. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the rest of my makeup up all of the products that I use are the same ones that I used yesterday. All right, all my makeup is on and I waited another half hour to see if some of my oils coming through would make this situation look better and it looks so-so. I can definitely see that it's still drier than the rest of my face, both on my chin and in my T-zone. But I still wanna see how it wears with powder underneath to see if it holds better over time. Maybe it doesn't look so good right now, but in a couple hours, it'll blend a little bit better. But that is it for now. I will check in at the halfway point to show you how it's wearing. All right, we are a little over five hours in. If I were to wear this again, I don't think that I would powder underneath. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it looks better now that my oils have come through than it did at the very beginning, but it doesn't look as nice as the other areas that don't have powder underneath. It just looks a little bit drier and the foundation is just clinging on to it a little bit weird. It's like some areas are more saturated than others. And the same thing is happening here in my T-zone. Some areas I can see there's lots of foundation and then other areas where it seems to be my skin peeking through. So it's just, it's clinging on to it weird with the powder underneath it. Whereas you can see on my cheeks it looks it looks normal so I just wouldn't powder underneath again another thing that I'm noticing is that on the crevice of my nose like right here there's some oil collecting and it's just it's a little shinier than I would like and I'm also getting those missing dots of foundation where my hair would grow it's quite faint but I am seeing it and whenever I get these little dots on my upper lip it really bugs me so even though it's faint it's still annoying to me. <laughs> Oil wise though, I actually feel like it looks pretty good. I don't wanna blot today just because I tried that yesterday. So I would like to see what it looks like without me blotting today. Overall though, I feel like the foundation is okay. It's wearing pretty good in some areas and then other areas where it's wearing kind of just meh. But this is what it will look like a little over five hours in, in natural lighting. I will check back in at the 10 hour mark to give you my final thoughts on this product. Okay, so it's been 10 hours. This is looking pretty rough, um, especially since I didn't blot today. So I am very, very shiny. The entire 
center of my face just looks wrecked. It's doing the same thing that it did on day one. I'm getting those little holes of missing foundation and my chin, it is very much broken up. And you can see in my T-zone too, it's just really, really splotchy. So powdering underneath was a really bad move. And if you don't blot, you have this oily situation. I also wanted to point out that in my nose crack, it has gotten worse. It's very oily in the cracks of my nose and it's broken up quite a bit. So even though I didn't really like the way it looked after I blotted, I actually would prefer blotting and having it a little bit less broken up than how it looks right now. I'm gonna just take a paper towel. My blotting sheets are upstairs. It's the end of the day, so it's fine. But I just wanna get rid of some of these oils here. And you can see because I was so oily, when I blot too late, it just destroys the foundation. So blot earlier rather than later to avoid it lifting off so much. So I feel like this foundation works well up to about seven to eight hours. Around the eight to 10 hour mark, it just went downhill really fast. So I'd say seven to eight hours, if you are as oily as me, is how much wear time you're gonna get out of this foundation. So you have to decide for yourself, is $188 worth of product worth it? I think for less than $2, seven hours of wear isn't that bad. I mean, there are some foundations high end that I've worn that I can't even make it past five hours without it breaking down. So it's kind of impressive in that sense. So I'm just gonna give the pros and the cons and then you decide what you wanna do with that information. So the pros about this foundation is, first of all, it is stinking cheap. Less than $2 and the proceeds go to kids' education. The coverage is decent. I would say that it's a medium and it lasts up to seven to eight hours. So I don't know if that's a pro or a con. It's kind of something in between. The cons are powdering underneath was just don't do it. And when you blot with this foundation, it just, it looks drier. And even when your oils come back, it just doesn't look the same. So I would just be really careful about blotting, but I would say in general, it didn't do too well with me when I did blot. So in terms of recommending this foundation, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I personally wouldn't repurchase it. Like I like it enough that I would probably finish the bottle, but I wouldn't repurchase it. You know what I mean? If I had to rate it, I'd probably give it like a somewhere in between a 78 and an 81%. But that is it for this wear test. I hope that this was helpful, insightful, or at least entertaining. And if it was, don't forget to give a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what other types of foundations you'd like me to review and if you haven't already please consider subscribing i would love to see you come back thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one it will probably look better once but this it just it just went downhill really fast high five good girl so smart